everyone, the WWC conference. I'm so excited to be a part of this. Um, I had the opportunity. Well, my name's Jordan Wagner. I am a chef. I'm an author. I'm the host of a podcast called In the Weeds. I had the opportunity to interview Katie Pringle and last week, and we joked that this, this segment will be filled with nuggets of education and lots of smiles. Um, <laughs> our guest chef today is a rock star. So my, my backstory is very simple. I'm a classically French trained chef. And about six years ago, uh, I was 43 years old and I sought the help of a natural path. And from one meeting, I removed gluten, dairy and refined sugar from my diet and began consuming cannabis. I've always smoked joints. I've always used cannabis to deal with the effects of my psoriasis. But 60 days later, after that one meeting and changing everything in my diet and beginning to consume cannabis, my life changed. 30 pounds melted off my body and my psoriasis became manageable. That's where I am six years later, looking to learn, looking to teach, most of all, just looking to learn from rock stars like our guest chef today. So the chef is a cannabis chef. She's an educator. She is an advocate. She is the founder of Faded Living, which is a cannabis education and events company. She is a complete rock star and a friend that I met recently in our amazing cannabis chef community uh, on, of course, Clubhouse. Our guest chef today, the one, the only, she will knock you dead with her smile and her nuggets of info, Chef Nicole Hines. Welcome, Chef. Yay, chef Jordan, I feel like I had to clap for myself. That was like, what? I mean, that was a wonderful, wonderful welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, super, super happy to be here today with you. I am in gray Vancouver today, but we're smiling. That's okay. It's all good. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm going to be doing um, a demo for you guys, but we're going to also chat. We're going to have like some snippets of, you know, information to kind of do what I love doing with my business, which is normalize adult cannabis use. So here we are going to do it through like food and um, get some heat to things. So what should we start with? I have two things today for you guys. I've got a CBD mojito, and then I've also got a spicy infused guacamole. Olé. Olé. <laughs> All of the things. And I had to put some Jamaican in it because my background is Jamaican. And so there is some Jamaican's jerk sauce marinade in there for that heat. In the guac? Or in, I, I'm assuming in the guac. In the guac. Yeah, in, in, in the guac. <laughs> not in the I'm just not in the I, I, You know, I, I watch, I, or I watch, I listen to Smart List, uh, this podcast, and, and they joke that they're always having to explain things. So now I'm a little sensitive to just making sure I'm, I'm ex, you know, I'm explaining. No. Just it was for definitely someone. Before. Right. Okay, good. All right. So we're doing CBD in both. Or are you using THC in one? No, what are we, using, what cannabis I'm are we using? Actually, I'm using THC in the guacamole. Um, however, my recipes are, I consider them like a template and uh, or like a guide, right? So basically you can uh, swap ingredients. You can add things. I, I look at it as more like to help you get creative because I find that people um, get so like fixated on a recipe and, and that is the case for baking, but I'm a savory chef. So I, and I come from, you know, like I said, Jamaican background and my upbringing was cooking just based on feeling cooking based on sort of picking what works without all the measurements, you know? So what you're saying is basically these are blank canvases. Your recipes, you know, these are plug and play, it, whatever the consumer or more importantly, whatever the home cooks, home cook likes to cook for them and their family, these recipes are interchangeable, right? So these are blank yes. canvases. That's brilliant. That's really, yes. that's amazing. I love and that. And again, it's, it's to get people just doing for themselves. If one thing I've learned out of the COVID experience that we're still in is that we need to be a little self-sufficient. We need to learn how to do things. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that we don't support others. Like just because I am a cannabis chef, I also go to restaurants when it's, it's safe to do so. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you know, like a fashion designer doesn't only wear their own clothes guys, right? Like it's, it's, 
you know. Um, I think chefs on the whole, chef, are are much more supportive in 2021 oh. than we used to be. And I know as an old, I'm so much older and grayer, but you have no gray anyway. So I'm so much oh, older I, so. I have gray. <laughs> so you wouldn't remember the old days, but we were, I was an angry chef. And I think those days have changed. I find the pandemic to be honest and how we met was in this amazingly supportive community, right? Yes. And watching you and listening to you, I fell in love with you instantly. So before we go too far down that rabbit hole, what are we making first? Okay, we're gonna do the infused spicy guacamole. So I am, I had ordered this just to preface. I had ordered this really cool um, camera stand that it has AI technology that can follow you all around and stuff like that. Because I teach workshops, it hasn't arrived yet. It's been <laughs> some weeks, whatever. But COVID's here, so who's whatever, who right? Cares? So, who cares? Who cares? So sometimes I'm just gonna like show it to you guys to show you what I'm doing. But just to let you know, I started already because I know like sometimes I mean I'm a pot smoker cannabis queen and I ramble. So I wanted to make sure that I started the process to make sure that we, you know, do what we came here to do. So I'm going to start with this infused spicy guacamole. In this case, I'm actually going to be infusing it with a THC infused olive oil that I made. And I made a very low dose. This is sort of what it's in. I made a very low dose oil um, when I was uh, teaching a workshop because one of the things that I teach people is actually how to make a low dose oil. Um, because I mentioned, I'm trying to, you know, normalize adult cannabis use. And I know there's a lot of fears behind edibles and a lot of fears behind consuming cannabis orally. So I actually teach people to work with just 3.5 grams of cannabis and to choose a low dose cultivar that has like, let's say 6% THC or less, you know, more high in CBD to start off with. So that's- Is, is what that Jeff, what you call, what we call micro dosing? I mean, there are oh. many- Yes, that is the way I live my life. So the whole thing about calling my company Faded Living is because essentially I embody living a faded life from morning to night, right? My favorite way to consume though is uh, smoking a joint. I'm old school that way. Um, I am, you know, that's just the, the way I love for many reasons. However, um, I love cooking with it. I love drinking it. I love, you know, using it as a topical. I love, you know, taking a bath with it. Just so many different things. And because I love to smoke so much, I decided to approach eating cannabis in a more microdose kind of way. Great, great. Because so I'm running you, a business. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, and, more, and you know what I would say? The, the reason, another reason, and that's my approach to creating infused food stuff as well, because you want to remove those barriers of entry to those people that, that don't eat cannabis or consume cannabis like I do from six in the morning until I go to sleep at night. And I'm right. a very high functioning person. You know, I, I, I consider myself, I, I do a little bit in society, as do you. You do some yeah. good work. So I think what's really important is we're not appealing to us necessarily. Yeah. We're trying to introduce people into our world and the benefits of using cannabis for health and wellness, not only for the sole purpose of getting high, right? Exactly. And getting high is right, all right, because I love that too. But I also do have to be a functioning human being, right? There's a lot of things that are also on my plate. I'm also a mother too. I have three sons. They're not young, but my youngest is 18. He still needs guidance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, my oldest is 25. My middle son is 23. They still need, you know, love and support and all of those things. So I, uh, I need to function. I'm also a medical cannabis patient too. I use it because for pain management. So there's times where I'm clearly increasing my dose because I might have a painful day, right? So is that how you got into cannabis? Is that is that it, you began as a medical patient and realized, how did you get into it? Tell us. No, I actually, so in hindsight now, like I've been a cannabis consumer on and off for about 25 plus years or so. And when I look at my whole life 
at, at the times that I consumed, I have come to the realization that all use is therapeutic use. Because even in the times that I just needed it to chill out, it was because I was in, dealing with a lot of drama at that time. And it helped me not to pop off on people. It helped me to keep, keep me balanced, right? And then when I, it was six years ago, I had this car accident. It was like this crazy freak accident. I was able to walk away with soft tissue injuries, right? And lower back pain and all of those fun things. So I chose uh, cannabis as my form of pain management. Uh, I was living in Alberta at the time. They had, you know, cannabis clinics like natural health services and such. And I went through them because my family doctor was not all that interested in, in providing that. And so right. I got my prescription. I'm divorced. I wanted to dot my I's, cross my T's, you know what I mean? All those things. And once you start to realize like, wow, this really helps. And you can, you know, because I was taking over the counter stuff before I got the prescription and guess what happened? I had to get a medication to counteract the pain I was getting from my stomach from the medication that I was taking. So right. how does that even make sense? No, I'm with you. I'm with you hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So and that's, that's where that, that's how like my my appreciation for the plant changed tenfold because it was really helping me with the pain, especially at the beginning, right after an accident, it's like really horrible. Um, and then uh, that was about two years later, like was when legalization happened. So at the time of my accident is when the talks were happening. Right. And that's when I was noticing what the landscape of the cannabis industry was looking like, which was very right. cis white male. Right. And that's when I felt like as a black woman, black Canadian woman who even in Canada, we have their war on drugs. A lot of, you know, black and brown and indigenous people have been completely disenfranchised by, you know, our war on drugs. And I was like, I need to be part of this industry that a uh, 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 people who like completely was against it is now profiting off of it. Right. Yeah. Right? And are you finding that the majority of your clients, or is there a balance, I should ask, for, of your clients looking for a recreational and a medical experience, or are you servicing one uh, part of the community more than others? So before COVID, <clears throat> I had launched, um, I had done some uh, infused dining experiences. That's really the fun part for me. Like that's what I love doing. And I had collaborated with, um, uh, Siobhan McCarthy from Blissful Alchemy, who was uh, on another panel. She was a moderator. I have, um, uh, so I did some uh, collaborative dining experiences with her, which was more adult recreational use of a market. Then I also launched my own sort of dining experiences called Faded Feast last February of 2020. And I was going to take it across Canada and collaborate with other cannabis chefs and do the thing. And then COVID happened. So again, the, the clientele was still quite the same. But now that I'm doing workshops, like the virtual workshops, I'm finding that I'm getting people from the I call the culture, which is the adult sort of rec mark, but I'm also getting newbies, people who are, you right. know, they have fibromyalgia or, you know what I mean? Things of that nature that they uh, have, have their doctors are actually now receptive to cannabis as a, a form of, you know what I mean? Like assistance. And right. so I've had some take courses to learn about because they don't know anything about it. And because of our industry, unfortunately, yeah, it's legal. I'm so blessed, but you can't, say a lot about the benefits of the plant right yeah absolutely right so uh, so i have a so bit we, of both. <laughs> what do we have what do we have going on in there so right now what i've done is um i am just uh putting some avocado mm -hmm. in a bowl i've got a one large tomato uh diced mm -hmm. i've got a half of a jalapeno you can use more do do you you know what I mean like it's all it's all up to you so I'm pouring all of this into a bowl I've Beautiful. also got um half a red onion chopped that I'm pouring in there as well does uh, it have to be do you prefer it finely diced or roughly chopped what what do you so think I am so again it's all based on your preference because there's people who like a smoother guacamole I like a chunky one 
right? So my pieces are quite chunky. Um, others like a really fine diced. So I think that really work with what works for you because at the end of the day, you're eating it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so uh, it should, you know, and this is where you really get all your control as to how you want things like going out to a restaurant is lovely. I love going out because I get to see somebody else's creativity, right? Course, I get to see absolutely. what they're doing, but it doesn't always mean that that's exactly how you like things. hundred percent. How right? are you emulsifying the oil into the avocado? How are you, oh, how are you, how are you mixing that? I'm together? just going to be mixing everything in. So nice. I'm, yeah, so that is going to be, it's going to be super, super easy that well, um, uh, that way I am doing a tablespoon. So one thing I will say is that, as I mentioned, I do, um, cooking with cannabis workshops and I teach people how to make a, uh, you know, a low dose oil using, um, uh, 3.5 grams, an eighth to Ontario, because <laughs> that's where I'm from. Um, but I also uh, only work with one cup so that it's an easy ratio. So I'm working with 3.5 grams with one cup of your oil so that I can also give you a calculation so that you can find out how much THC is in a tablespoon. Because as you know, in a cup of of oil, it, it, it it's an equivalent to like 16 tablespoons, I believe. And so therefore I can give you a calculation. And so people can figure that out. And for, for people that this is their first foray at home, cooking food with their loved one, their friends, whomever, what do you think is the best way for them to safely infuse food? Do you think that they should begin by decarboxylating some cannabis and doing their own infusion? Or do you think it's maybe better off that we, you know, that, that, that they're directed to buying something more off the shelf? What are your thoughts? So my thoughts, so it, it's, um, I like using, uh, something that's on the market for somebody brand spanking new because then they get the exact dose. And the reason being, even though I am going, to, I teach people how to do their calculation and all of those things, uh, your decar process may not be like a hundred percent because, you know, one oven from another is different. The temperatures are not exact. Like if you're using machinery, like some of the really great products that are on the market um, that help with that, um, like the Ardent has a, a deep carb, you know what I mean? Product, like a, a machine type of thing. So that, uh, and I've, I don't personally have that one, but the reviews have been like, it's really great in terms of the temperature and stuff. But when you're doing it at your home, there's room for a variation, right? And whereas right. when you're getting something on the market, it's it's quite exact. So for someone new, I do like going that route. And, and that's why even with the, the CBD drink that we're going to do, I'm actually using an on the product CBD right. product. Yeah. Right. That's great. And I think, you know, we were speaking offline that there's, I, I refer to this as re creating a repeatable experience. And so that's when someone finds their cannabis sweet spot, you know, whatever that is, I know what mine is. And when you find that cannabis sweet spot, you want to be able to repeat that experience. You don't want it to be a guessing game. So if you know that you're using something that is 20 milligrams per milliliter and you are putting a quarter teaspoon, which is one milliliter, there's 20 milligrams in that recipe. And however many servings you yield from that, well, it's, it's, it's the yield divided by the servings equals your, you know, your cannabis. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, cannabis per serving. So it's not, it, it takes a lot of the, um, the, the guessing game out of it, yeah. I think. And even fear and even fear. Because right. I, I honestly believe, um, I think sometimes the, the, the hard thing about cannabis is that it is such a, an individual experience, right? Exactly. I can speak to you about a lot of things that happen to a lot of us, but we all have our own endocannabinoid system. Everything is going to affect us so differently, especially if your exposure is brand spanking new to somebody who has been feeding their system for some time. You know what I mean? All of those things. So like I, I always like, I've been always speaking on like, this is how it affects me. Right. 
this is what my experiences have been. Um, but when you use something that is really precise, at least you can have a bit less um, fear about things because that also is what helps to fuel um, uncomfortable experiences is your internal fear about stuff, you know, like, and then we lose, and then we lose them. And, and yeah. when they, you know, if something, if they're the most important thing, and I've used the word emulsify a couple of times, like we have to make sure that we're creating homogenous mixtures. So the cannabis is, is evenly distributed. We had a question in the chat here about bioavailability. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. And the question was regards to fatty foods. And do you believe that cannabis is more bioavailable when it's being used in fatty foods? So for example, the avocado, it's some great fat yeah. there. Do you yeah. think cannabis becomes more bioavailable when you are using fatty foods? I personally believe that. Um, I, uh, for that very reason, I actually infuse coconut oil a lot more than I do other oils because exactly. coconut oil is so high in saturated fats. And yeah. because cannabis itself is not cheap. I mean, if you're growing it, that's phenomenal. Um, but a, a lot of us aren't even at that level yet. Um, so because it can be so pricey, I find that, and if you're making your own stuff, using an oil that is highest in, in the fats to kind of absorb all those cannabinoids so that you get everything is is my way of thinking and even with things like using avocado oil which i quite absolutely love um and uh, and olive oil i sometimes combine the two so that it becomes a fattier oil that i can use because you know coconut oil is lovely but it solidifies it and does. that's not always fun right it does i'll tell you and I, and I talk about it often about the, my kids went to some, you know, go to summer camp and a couple of years ago, I waited for them to go, to go. I decarboxylated a bunch of cannabis and infused four liters of, of aroma free coconut oil. It's still yeah. sitting there in my refrigerator uh, because I, I don't use it because I, I, I'm constantly, you know, buying product to serve yeah. to my clients. There's a difference. And I think this is what's really critical. There's a distinction for the chef and I, you know, the chef is, is creating through faded living, these unbelievable elevated cannabis experiences. And she needs to be able to tell you what's in that food stuff. Yeah. That's different than you rolling the dice at home. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, listen, look, I will, I think what's really critical about bioavailability and what changed my life chef more than anything is the removal of refined sugar. And I believe yeah. cannabis becomes a lot more, and we, you know, I won't go on my soapbox and this is a different, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do another one together <laughs> yeah. and talk about sugar and, and the impact, but, you know, refined sugar in your infused food stuff, it's sort of counterintuitive when your body is going to start, you know, absorbing that sugar first. Why wouldn't it? It's sugar's really good. Right. But, you know, when you're, when you're creating edibles, when you're creating infused food, sans, you know, without refined sugar, now your body is starting to absorb that cannabis a little bit, you know, first. So, you know, before it's going to that sugar. And so, that's my little soapbox thing in terms of bioavailability. And I stand firmly on it. One day, yeah. Chef, we'll prove it out together. So. Yes, that's so true. That's so but, true. So as you were speaking, I just wanted yeah. to let everybody know, um, this is the spiky, spicy guacamole. And I, I just want to add um, a, a little snippet about the spiciness to it. So the spice that I really used to kind of give it a kick was a little bit of habanero, I'm um, not habanero, but jalapeno. <laughs> habanero will, will be even spicier, but you can go that route if you choose. But it was really through um, a Jamaican jerk spice marinade. Uh, it's, a, it's a marinade that I make. Uh, my recipe has about 15 ingredients in it. It is vegan. It's all things like onions, garlic, scotch bonnet peppers, habanero, if you live in BC, because it's very hard to get a scotch bonnet pepper out here, side note. Um, garlic, uh, ginger, uh, and then some dried spices. The main, main, main spice is allspice. So that is really what gives sort of that, it's known in a lot of Jamaican cuisine is allspice. And so that is kind of what I do. I blend it all together. And then um, I just put a, I put a tablespoon in my serving, but others might want to do a teaspoon. And so what are you serving that with, Chef? So, of course, I've just got myself 
I'm just doing a little bit of tortilla because you know what? I what time is it? It's only 10:32 a.m. in my neck of the woods, so I'm just doing a little bit of a snack. But do you know that this could be even great on a burger? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you want to, like, you can do like a lot of different things. Don't just think guac is only for a tortilla chip. Okay, so there's a lot of other things that you can do with that. And in this case, I only put one tablespoon of infused THC olive oil this time. And it only has about 13 milligrams of THC in that tablespoon. So if you're not going to eat all of that in one sitting, which that would not happen at my table. So I'm asking for someone else um, because I'm just going to eat that. I want to jump through the screen. (laughs) Um, If you're not going to consume all of it in one sitting, can you store it in your refrigerator overnight? You can. Avocado is a little weird. Um, Make sure there's lime juice in this in this recipe. So that will help. Um, But you we all know that whenever you're doing something that has avocado in it, it will turn brown really quickly. So your your timing is probably like the next day. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll definitely oxidize for sure overnight. Maybe even throwing some plastic wrap, not over top of the bowl, but right on the surface of the avocado puree itself prevents that oxygen, the oxygen from getting on that surface that can help too. Absolutely. And this, this recipe too, like it usually, I mean, uh, what, like I said, the recipes are usually a template or a guide, right? So I had used like, let's say four avocados in this because I'm doing it for people, right? But if you're doing it for yourself, you can always cut everything down to like only using one avocado, only using half of a tomato or a quarter of a tomato, right? Like you can always break it down so because a lot of people are living alone, right? And, and they don't need to make these huge batches. So Chef D, is the majority of your food plant-based or do you have a balance? Like, can you just walk us through your approach to just food? So um, one of the other things that cannabis does for me is connect is, has really, uh, like I've had a spiritual connection with the plant as well. Uh, I've went through a little bit of a spiritual awakening. I've been going through it for many years of my life, but it's like, it kind of reactivated again in 2020 and I stopped eating meat. Like I only started reintroducing, uh, like fish into my diet and, um, some Turkey into my diet back in because I, I do enjoy meat, but I think that we've eaten too much of it in in my personal opinion. Uh, so I, and I only want to eat sort of farm to table when it, when I'm actually in, in having meat in my body, I only want to sort of deal with the farmer. So I was waiting for the outdoor farmer's market season to happen. Right. It is back. It's here. So that's why I'm like, so reintroducing it, but for the most part, it's, it's primarily vegetarian. Cause I do you know, really love cheese. You know, chef Ned Bell out your way. Chef Ned Bell. So he's, a, he's, he's a wonderful chef. It's funny when I'm when I when I spoke with him recently, I realized that he's actually younger than me. And I've been watching him on TV my whole life. So I felt like he was so much older than me and he was younger than me. But he's he it was really interesting. One one of the takeaways that I had was he mentioned how when he and I started in the business, you had, you know, it was the triangle. You had the eight ounce filet or the 10 ounce filet. You had asparagus and you had mashed potatoes. And it's just how that filet has become, you know, gone from being eight ounces or 10 ounces down to like two ounces on a plate where it's almost you think of, you know, meat as more of a garnish than yes. an actual, you know, focal point of the dish. So I, I'm the same way as you. I'm very much plant-based. I love it. I feel leaps and bounds better. Yeah, I do. And it's been, and you know, one of the things too is that, um, so I used to to, um, own a food business when I lived in Calgary. It was called Wings and Tangs. I did Jamaican jerk chicken wings and all of that fun stuff. And um, I had a huge vegetarian following because I did 
handmade Jamaican vegetable patties. I did really good salads. You know, our rice and peas, which is essentially rice and beans dish, is, you know, vegetarian. And it was the flavors that they were looking for, right? The fact that they, you know, just because you're not eating meat doesn't mean that you lack the love for flavor. You know what I mean? Like it would, you know, like, so, uh, because I had that sort of, and I was in a farmer's market as well. Like, so I've just been around that sort of mentality of really using good food, uh, good ingredients, great flavors. Right. So while you're talking about then, can you, can you just speak to your faded living, your, your ex- cannabis experiences, What's the approach to the use of cannabis in those experiences? Is cannabis at the forefront or is food more at the forefront? Flavors. So how do you, how do you sort of, what's your approach to it? So um, the, so I, I, when I do my dinners, I actually create the oil that I use for the dinner. Um, I'm able to then uh, tell my guests how the, the oil was created. I kind of show them a lot of times I not only use dried cannabis, but I also use um, rosin chips as well. Uh, I have friends out here who press rosin. And so basically I um, use the chips and also create oils using that. So that is something that I am able to show people. This is what a rosin chip looks like. They get to, you know, I have these samples that they get to touch it, right? So that, because again, if you break down the fear of people, their experience is going to be much better and enjoyable than not, right? I always let people know that my intent for you guys this evening is to make you feel that you're wrapped in a warm, cozy blanket, not to annihilate you because, you know what I mean? That is not my intent. I want everybody to have a good experience. I also let them know that there are things at the space that can help to counteract the effects if they're not feeling well. So I'll have like CBD around, I have a lot of citrus. I actually cook with, I'll do like a a mandarin salad, let's say, right? With an infused dressing. Well, that citrus in the salad is not going to increase your intensity. It's gonna kind of help balance it out so that nothing's too much, right? And because I'm making my own oil and most of the cuisine I do is Jamaican fusion, it actually works well with the flavors of allspice and nutmeg and cinnamon and you know what I mean? So it's like a bit of both, right? Like it's a bit of like, it is about the cuisine, but it's also educating and making sure everybody feels good, you know? Will you ever use raw flour in any of your dishes? Oh, well, speaking of that, yes. So I... So last year, and I recommend this to everybody, if you haven't done this in your life, if you are in a place that's safe to do so, try to grow one plant in your life. It will allow you to get really connected to the plant. You will understand how sensitive she is. You will, you know, it's just seeing something, especially if you do it from seed all the way up to like, you know what I mean? To harvest is really phenomenal. So last year I uh, grew some plants. One was a male and sadly I had to kill him. So, cause everybody was like, oh my God, get rid of him. You're, you're going to like, you know, ruin the neighborhood. So I, I killed it and then I kept the leaves. And at, th- at that time I didn't actually do anything with them. So I froze them. And so then this year I started putting them in smoothies and then now I'm like, okay, well, the next time that I grow, I'm going to start adding them to salads or just juicing and all of the things. Oh. Right? So yeah, I'm, so- I'm done for it. You should make, we'll make a pesto together. Yeah, okay, can I just say, I'm doing a, a cooking with cannabis uh, workshop. Uh, so I do a series called uh, Cooking with Cannabis and Terpenes. And each month I uh, feature a terpene. Last month I did Mercine. And so all the recipes were like mango re- recipes type of thing. And this month I'm focusing on pinene. So I am going to do, uh, I'm going to do, um, you know, Chef Diego from Clubhouse. Sure. Yeah, (laughs) she's amazing. So I was considering doing a a pesto anyways, an infused pesto, um, using a cultivar that was high in pinene. But then she also recommended, she's like, you should do like a Jamaican jerk pine, like pesto. And I'm here for it. Totally. And you should throw some of that, you should throw some of that jerk marinade that you make into that pesto. 
Yes, that would yes. be that would be lights out. Lights that's, out. I know. <laughs> I lights know. Out. So that's what I'm going to do. And I this is the thing about you're right. Like the uh, after COVID, like with the chef community specifically, is is so loving, especially in the cannabis chef community. Like, you know, I'm a self-taught chef, but when I was in um, my former food life, I was in an indoor farmer's market, which is like its own world, right? Like in Calgary, like it, it's a whole, it's like its own little city of people. A lot of chefs own their own booths and businesses and such in these, in these markets. And so, and Calgary is like a really communal kind of place, but like I did a lot of events with a lot of chefs. Chefs were buying my jerk sauce marinade. I was going to, you know what I mean? If I stayed in that city, I would have done some things, but um, I was drawn to here. I was drawn to these BC streets, <laughs> but I definitely see the connection, especially with the cannabis chef community, really, really coming together. And we're always like, you know, offering suggestions, collaborating. And I love it. I absolutely love amazing. it. That's amazing. So tell us about the mojito. Is that where we're going? Okay, at? So I have a shaker real quick. A little martini shaker here and what i've done is i decided to work with um coconut water in this beverage as well as uh lime juice so and i'm also putting a little bit of um carbonated water as well this type of thing so i've just added some uh coconut water i've added like a half a cup of coconut water half a cup of um uh my limes, as well as a half of my um, carbonated water. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm doing that. And then I also have 10 leaves of mint that I have also put in here as well. And then I am going to do a little bit of like a, you know. Shake, 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 shake. Yeah, I'm going to shake, shake, shake. But before I shake, shake up, baby. Now. I'm, like, I'm going to do the shake. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a wooden spoon and kind of like just mulch everything around. Yeah, perfect. So you're breaking up the mint. Yeah. And you're breaking up the mint, which is now releasing all those essential, beautiful essential oils in the mint, right? Yes. Gorgeous. Now, that, he, now I can now smell I can, it from here. Trust, guys. It is killer. Can I just tell you? Now, this is what, so I decided to mulch first, get that going. And now I'm going to add my um, CBD oil and then I'm going to mulch again to kind of like get all of that in there, right? So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using something off of the market. Again, it just makes it really easy if, if you haven't purchased an oil before or a tincture before. It makes it really, really easy. You fill your dropper at the area that you, you need for the day. Sometimes you don't need a full dropper, right? Like, I mean, and sometimes you do. It just has a, a way, way better um, ability to know how much you're consuming. Because the beauty about being a legalized market is it gives you that information, exactly how much CBD is in one full dropper, right? So then you can actually do Right. Breakdown and calculations. So I've just poured that in there again. I'm just mulsing this girl around doing all the things. And then I'm going to add some ice in. Okay. Because that, and then we're going to shake. We are going to shake it up. And, and that, and the, I guess the ice in, in that shaker is going to help emulsify because you've yes. got the oil that's mixing with the water and the, the, the sparkling water and the coconut water. So the, it's, it's agitating it, right? So I guess it's helping to emulsify that. And is this and, one serving, Chef? Is this one serving? Yeah, this is going to be one serving. This is okay. one serving. And I um, uh, also want to mention that you can purchase a... Um, uh, CBD tincture, right? With this, which is alcohol based. And therefore you don't have to, you know, worry so much. It's going to easily mix and such, but I'm just kind of showing people that sometimes you look in your cupboard and you realize you're out. So it's like, don't stress. It just means that you are going to experience your beverage in one sitting. Like you're not going to have it sit around because you kind of don't want, um, you don't want it to you getting all floaty, solidified, 
pieces unless you like that sort of thing you know it's entirely up to, you know what i mean i'm not here to judge there's no different judgment. strokes different strokes right <laughs> and if this is individual drinks are individual right and it's and and the whole the whole thing about about um this recipe and mostly all the recipes that i create is to just show how easy it is that you can infuse your meals. Um, a lot of the things that I do, uh, do are sides. Like even the guacamole is like a side. You'd like, I'm, you know, yes, when I'm doing a meal, a lot more of the meal is infused, of course, cause that's the experience. But a lot of people don't live necessarily in a full cannabis household. Right. And so I do dressings and you know what I mean? And gravies and you know, bruschettas and things like that, that it's, it doesn't mean that the whole meal is, it just means that, you know, it's just a portion. You know, it's, it's funny because for so many people, when they think edibles, they're thinking about gummies and brownies and the like, right? Yes. Food stuff similar to that. And really, when you think about what we're doing, the vast majority of the food that we cook, like all my desserts are plant-based and all of my desserts, I love my desserts, but if you come for a 15 course meal, there's only three desserts. So yeah. the balance are all savory dishes, right? Yeah. So we're changing the perception and that's, this is an amazing demonstration of what you can do with cannabis outside of your gummies and your brownies and your cookies. Absolutely. And I just want to tell oh, you yeah. everyone, that is it, right? So it, everything is homogenized. And yeah. the only floating is actually just the, because I got a coconut um, water that had pulp, right? Yeah. So if there wasn't any pulp, you wouldn't have seen a thing. And I'm just yeah. going to take a sip. Cheers. I'm a little jealous. You're going to oh, have a hey, wonderful guys. day. Oh my God, you need to do this. <laughs> Change your life. It is so good. Can I just say that it made it look like sunshine was about to happen in these BC streets. It's very good, guys. So I'm just letting you know, you will absolutely enjoy oh, this. And, so I, and I wanted to just speak on one real thing because you kind of touched on it and you were like, yeah, we should have a conversation about it uh, another time. It's like, so for me, like I said, I'm strictly a savory, savory chef, right? Like anytime I do dinner parties, I actually partner with a pastry chef and who actually happens to be a cannabis chef as well. I'm lucky being in Vancouver, like I had options to work with people, right? So, so that's sort of the thing for me, but the beauty I find with the savory cooking is the lack of sugar, right? Because uh, the, sadly, a lot of the edibles and beverages that are on the market are really high in sugar, guys. Like it's too much, it's too much. Yeah, I I mean, again, I will, s listen, you said you opened the door, so I have to speak to it. But the bottom line is this, we need to get our stuff together. We need to have these types of conversations. Companies need to be employing people who can create flavor profiles that are, that can rival anything with sugar and anything with gluten and anything with chemicals. And that's what we do is that Absolutely. we can help create those flavor profiles. And I think that that's what people are scared of. Most of all, people don't know that this can be done. They're, they just go down the same path, speaking to the same people, but th there's, there's different type of community that we need to service here. It's not only for people that are eating the gummies and brownies and cookies for rec purposes. These yeah. are people like me that sugar kills me like we kills me. My, it inflames my psoriasis and it becomes debilitating right? right so anyways i'm with you and and i i can't wait to eat your food this was amazing i have a question yes. i have a question what's the one concern that your clients come to you with those clients that this is really their first foray into cannabis what are they mostly concerned about um getting too high yeah yeah. yeah. And, and how, do you talk, how do you talk them off the ledge? So what do you say? Um, so basically I, I say that it's that experience is n not as wild as you think, because sometimes that is only because that was the propaganda that they were, were fed. Right. So this is not always based on like, yeah, they had an experience that they greened out 
quote unquote. This is a lot of times just kind of what they've been told. And that's the one thing. So that's number one. Number two, I also, I let them know that when it comes to cannabis, there's actually some ways to help um, reduce that feeling if you were to feel too high. Um, and when you have alcohol, let's say, or even uh, opioids or whatever the case may be, you kind of just have to deal with it, right? But in cannabis, like for a lot of people, it's not for everybody, but there are things like, you know, um, chewing peppercorn and and sniffing pe black pepper, for instance, that a lot of people have in their households. And it's because of the caryophylline that's in it that actually helps to reduce somebody's uncomfortable feeling um, when they're consuming cannabis, right? Like CBD is another option that has helped for a lot of people, right? Citrus is another option. Whereas with alcohol, like, or, you know, like I said, opiates, you kind of just have to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, it, that's just it, right? So that's two, right? And the fact that like, you know, I recommend that with cannabis use, like for me, I'm always teaching me people to start low and go slow, right? So that has been really the, the safe way that has you hear it preached by so many people. That is not always the um, message that I've learned with drinking. <laughs> my, you know what I mean? Like, that's not really the message that in my upbringing, at least, it wasn't really like, you know, just like stop. It was like, have have more, have another drink, have another drink, you know what I mean? So so I kind of give those people those those, the fact that there are options, the fact that, you know, there are options to help you not feel uncomfortable. It does work for a lot of people, you know what I mean? So there's that. The fact that, you know, we all, there are things on the market that are really low dose. That's one of the beauties of like the Canadian legal market is the fact that, you know, if you want to approach cannabis and don't want to like smoke or vape, you can get something with two milligrams of THC in it, one piece of something to actually like quietly introduce it to your life right so 100 percent. and and i would add to that that if there wasn't sugar in that in that food stuff that you're having those two milligrams of thc you're going to you're going to feel that very differently than something that is filled with sugar it's just the way it is and yeah. you know we can prove that out together we need to eat each other's food a yes. lot and which means and i, I need to get I need to get out to Vancouver. I yes, do need to do that. you must. Can I just say, okay, can I just big you up for a minute? And I know it's about me for a minute, but it's true. Go check out his page. His food is divine, okay? The photos are divine. And on top of that, again, it's like we're, we're showcasing how you can eat healthy and actually get your medicine or eat healthy and actually get your recreation, whatever your choice or intent for this plant is, you can actually get it with health in mind, right? Like, so, I mean, yeah, please check them out guys, everybody. That's very kind. Thank you, chef. So tell us, tell us what's next for you. Where can we find you? Where can we support you? If we want to book you, how yes. do we, how do we book you? Where do we find you? Okay, so I have a website, fadedliving.com. It is officially live. Uh, you can't purchase anything yet. Payment processor is work, being worked on as we speak, guys. But you can connect with me there. It has all my contact info and stuff like that. And we can have conversations there. But you can also get to see the t what I'm about and what I do. Um, I am also on a lot of social media platforms. I have been lucky to be able to grab at Faded Living pretty much everywhere. So you can see me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest all of those places. If you're in the clubhouse streets, I am Nicole Hines. I'm there pretty often. I love that space. I do a, um, uh, 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 how do you cook with cannabis um, monthly room and monthly room, weekly room with chef Jamie Wahlberg. So that's Tuesdays at six PST. You can always pop into that room because now clubhouse is for everyone. And so you can pop in and uh, chat with me and ask me questions, but definitely feel free to DM me. Um, I'm fadedliving420 at gmail.com.